Poppet Combo's got a particular brand of horror that's really good. Their games always look like low poly PS1-esque games, but offer tension that can give you goosebumps even when you don't have the sound on. And the Switch can play a lot of their games. From Nun Massacre to Stay Out of the House to Bloodwash, and now technically three more titles by Jordan Knight, you can play a lot of their scary games on the go. A bit of a different take than their normal outings, let's take a look at a zombie game. Here is my review of Night at the Gates of Hell for the Nintendo Switch. The story of this game is inspired by Italian zombie movies like the Gates of Hell trilogy by Lucio Fulci. We start with the character of Liam who meets up with a hookup near an old church when the literal gates of hell open up, unleashing zombies onto the world. We then shift to the character of David who's dealing with the zombie apocalypse, working his way out of his apartment building and venturing with a group of misfits just trying to find a safe place. And overall, I find this story to be pretty good. There is a bit of plot to it outside of just reading files, and there are some neat, albeit morally disgusting, characters in the main cast that you see a bit of across the game's several chapters. But what I find most interesting is the continuity Jordan made between his various games. Knight is technically standalone, but said to be chronologically a follow-up to Bloodwatch, seeing three returning characters from that game. Liam from the prologue is the same one that was the boyfriend of Sarah, Bloodwash's protagonist. We also see Stan from Sarah's apartment show up in the main cast, and the creepy guy from the Bloodwash bus is one of the early zombified humans that Dave encounters in this game. When it comes to gameplay, this is a first-person survival horror game with combat elements thrown in. While most of Papa Combo's games are about evading an unkillable stalker, this game has you go through a variety of environments, fending off zombies with firearms like a revolver and shotgun as you try to get to safety. Now, the Switch release is much like the PC original, meaning this is technically three puppet combo games all in one. Finishing Night at the Gates of Hell will unlock Evil in the House of Dr. Fleshenstein, a spin-off of this game, as well as the hilariously titled The Booty Creek Cheek Freak, a very short stalker-style horror game about running away from a killer with a literal butt for a face. But back to main progression. Night at the Gates of Hell is a level-based horror game. Each level takes place in a different environment with you walking around a 3D area, trying to find items and notes to guide you on how to leave and get away from the zombies. It's pretty similar to Papa Combo's other games with moving around in first person, gathering items, and slowly being able to unlock areas based on the items that you find. The main difference here is that you have weapons and ammo you can actually find to kill the enemies that stalk you. While you are required to do headshots for kills, you can find ammo and use your fire arms to aim and shoot the zombies in the head to take them out. It also borrows a bit from the Resident Evil 1 remake with knives you can collect and are used for self-defense. Though it isn't completely user-friendly. Being PS1-esque, this game is pretty clunky. Moving around and picking up items is fine, but you have to physically push the doors to open them and that works pretty 50-50 in the earlier levels on whether you actually get the door open enough to leave the room. The apartments area is the worst about this, where many of the doors get partially open but often get stuck, requiring you to let go of the door and try again a couple more times to get it open. Thankfully, once you get to stages 2 and 3, it's no longer a problem. The shooting has a bit of clunk to it as well, but it's a little more understandable. When you aim down the sights of your weapon, you're required to stand still while doing so. This isn't too bad as the original concept for this game was apparently to make a first person PS1 Resident Evil-like title, which standing still while aiming falls right into that. But the better question is whether this can still be scary in puppet combo fashion with these combat elements here. And the answer is yes. Night is a very creepy game, not only from its audio cue jump scares, but little changes made to the areas mid-stage. Some rooms will have you walk around and suddenly when you turn around, there's a zombie sticking their head around a doorway staring right at you. Or walking past a line of corpses in the morgue to grab a key and you turn around to see them all sitting straight up. Just small little changes while you're not looking can really give you the creeps. And of course, we also have a handful of audio spiking jump scares thrown in to keep the scare factor up. Now, as we get closer to the amount of content we have here, it is worth noting that this game has no save mechanic. You go from level to level, unlocking them as you go. You can unlock stage three, leave the game, and go right back into it from the level select. You don't keep inventory between levels anyway, so you don't lose anything by doing that. It's also interesting you technically can't die in this game. 
Outside of the final stage, there are checkpoints throughout the levels, and if you're caught by a zombie and killed, you just respawn at that checkpoint. And crazy enough, you'll often respawn and all the zombies you killed between the checkpoint and when you were caught will still be dead after you respawn. And then we get to content and length, which this is one of the longer puppet combo games I've played. Most of them are trial and error 60 minute adventures that turn into multiple hours because of learning the system. But this game I spent a good four hours on only having to repeat the final stage a couple times from getting caught. It's very different and has a decent amount of stuff for you to do. Plus the extra games unlocked at the end can add another couple hours to that time. Next up is presentation, which looks good. It's supposed to be PS1-esque, especially with the horrific style the game gives to heads and faces. They may look disturbing, but it looks pretty decent for the style they're going for. Performance is also good, for the most part. Inner areas like the apartments or the stalker portion of Booty Creek Cheek Freak runs at a really high FPS, while outer areas mostly stay smooth, dropping here and there. And that brings us to battery life. The original and the light models get four and a half to six hours out of Night at the Gates of Hell, and the V2 and OLED models get a range of seven to nine hours. In conclusion, Night at the Gates of Hell brings more of Puppet Gombo's brand of horror to the handheld world with a surprising amount of ties and continuity to link it with Bloodwash that's also available on the Switch. Now on the downside, some of the doors are a bit clunky to the point of not being able to get through them most of the time, and there are occasional frame drops here and there in the larger areas. But if you can deal with some frustrating doors early in the game, it's a neat and disturbing little collection of horror games about killing zombies and stalkers with butts for faces. Reviews to go rates Night at the Gates of Hell for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.